you would do, what would you do differently? Ooh. Hear from our experts about how they wish they could have done things differently. So we can just kind of wrap up. Um, basically, I want to know what you guys would do differently. Um, you guys have been brewing for like a long time now, you know, years under your belt, right? Like no. you're, you're, you brewed a fair amount. <laughs> how many, how many brews do you think you've done? my first professional job. Um, how many brews do you think you've done now? Uh, you next week we hit batch 50. 50. Um, so that's pretty bad. 50 professional brews? We're not talking about your home brews or anything? Uh, I'm a cloud. We're hitting 50 full scale batches. We've done 45 test batches. Well, there's one or two in there that like don't get counted. So like 56 test batches and then home brewing. Uh, I don't even know. Hundreds of gallons. Hundreds of gallons. Yeah. All right, cool. And you're probably even more because you're a little bit older. And you know, how many brews do you think you have under your belt, man? <laughs> well, most people have more experience than I do in the brewing industry. I'm kind of an anomaly, I think. <laughs> probably at about probably around four thousand barrels here at the Dudes. That's crazy. Just at the Dudes, yeah. yeah. And then not even counting your home brews and other ventures and stuff. That's no, we, that's crazy. You can't man. count those. <laughs> There's just too many. Yeah. So too many. What would you do differently um, if you could hop in a time machine, go back? <laughs> Downsize. Downsize. Fifteen barrel brew house tops and keep it small batch. How many brews would you would you do? still like a, a range of brews or would you stick to like one thing or with you know with less product in house starting it, it moves quicker so you can put more variety out there to find the one that hits 60 barrels takes a lot longer to sell than 15 barrels or seven barrels or five it's just and being young when no one knows about you you know, flip side is, you know, we grunt it out and in right. four or five years, we'll be blowing through those 60 barrels and it's like we didn't have to add a brew house and take an old one out. So, you know, we plan for the future. It's just in the present, it's tough. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Like we're, we're launching with distribution in the next couple of weeks and it's like we can hit them with eight brands or eight beers. Like if we're at a huge scale and that's not going to overwhelm the market like it's such a small amount really of each beer that the struggle for us really is to make sure that if someone really likes that beer that they could consistently have it but we're not like if it's one beer and people don't are like kind of like mm, i'm not really sure we can that product go somewhere else like we're not going to be like open the floodgates of one beer and everyone's like, wait, but we're already <laughs> carrying that one beer. Like, That's we, a good point. you don't yeah. you have anything else? Like, can we try that? And so, but then we have to brew a lot more. Uh, so. so you would do, what would you do differently? Ooh, probably better financing um, on things. So, um, we struggle with having like a, well, I'm not an owner, but uh, struggle with a really solid uh, plan for launching, plan for how the brew house is going to be set up, and, um, or not physically set up, but like what the throughput was going to look like, what we were really going to do, and then ensuring that product was going to get out there. Like our sales initially has been, I think, lacking the aggression that uh, self-distribution is, is required to have. So, and it's just that we were stretched too thin. Like, we didn't have enough people. And it's hard to stomach that when you're super small and you're like, well, but we have no cash flow. Like, how are we gonna have uh, uh, more, more time pushed into sales when like, we're understaffed in our tasting room? Like, we need another bartender, but we also need you know, the owner to go out in the field. Like that, so. I run into stuff like this with my homebrew. You know, I wish, I wish my guys in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> oh, you, they were a little bit more easier to manage. But right? Man, <laughs> at every level, it's a headache, right? Yeah. 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 No. Something like we did. I thought uh, I set up the brew house. It's very manual, but I was like, I can totally run this. Like I set it up so that it was 
as simple as possible so that one person can do it. Like, you know, we have a grist hydrator so that it's only one person required to mash in. Gotcha. A grist case, and we can load that the night before so I don't have to climb up the ladder at six in the morning, stuff like that. It reduces a little bit of time, but still, even with all of that, like our best brew day is like maybe nine hours. Like, <laughs> that's too much time when I need to do, on top of that, uh, Board of Equalization paperwork, TTB stuff, grain ordering, ensuring that we weren't able to get hot contracts because we opened too late in the year. Like, so I have to, you know, sourcing hops. Stuff like that. So you you don't have time in the day. So yeah. I didn't think I was going to get an assistant brewer until the end of maybe year one. Oh, wow. I, we hired an assistant brewer probably within a, maybe a month oh. of opening because it was too much work. Yeah. You just can't, you can't manage that. So you, heavy on the planning, heavy on the planning if you're going to start like a new brewery. I was thinking you can't, you can't plan enough, like there's always room for another contingency plan and something's going to fail, something's going to be more work or less work than you thought and everything's going to go wrong if it can, it's like total Murphy's Law. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll never have enough money to actually reduce your exposure <laughs> um, to That's all of those point. kind of problems. I just got to jump off that ledge at one time. Totally. At one point. You gotta yeah. be fearless at some point. You just gotta, gotta yeah. get over that ledge. Yeah. <laughs> you, so, if you're risk adverse, this point. is not a business for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for following us on our homebrew journey. I know I learned a thing or two about the brew process. Hope you did as well. So now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy your refreshing homebrew. Cheers.